Up next on the Mar Army Rock Show, what a resume this guy has. Let me just tell you, uh, PJ Farley is with us. And if you don't know the name already, you probably know it and don't know you know it. Uh, does the name Trickster mean anything to you or touring with Kiss or Poison or Scorpions? We could go on and on. But PJ has a new record, which is why he's here. PJ, welcome to the show. Howdy doody. How, thanks for having me. Man, what a resume. So I'm excited to talk to you today. And really, the purpose of this, we want to talk mostly about Accent the Change, a new album. It came out September 25th. So, uh, hey, first things first, give us a look into the history of the making of this record. Like, how long was it in the works and where was it produced? That kind of stuff. It was about probably a little over two years in the making. It started out with just... Uh, one song I wrote and I wanted to record and uh, wasn't really sure I was making another record. I wasn't all that um, motivated to do another full-length record. Um, and then I wrote another song. So I wound up tracking two songs. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Maybe I got a little bud here. Maybe I'll uh, do an EP or something like that. But then I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to call it an EP. If I do five or six songs, I'm calling it a record. And that's it. That's all you get. <laughs> you know, no one's buying it anyway, so, he's, you know, no one's got any, you know, the attention span for long records anyway. But then I just kept writing. And um, before I knew it, I had, you know, about eight or nine songs. I'm like, all right, well, here we are. So, and I, I kind of did it in drips and drabs. I did two songs in Detroit first about two years ago. And then I went to L.A., I did another song. A couple months later, I went back to L.A., did another two songs. Um, I did a song in Nashville, did another song in L.A., and then I did two songs here in Jersey. And I just kind of pieced it together. I wanted to get different vibes, different feels, and, um, you know, work with different people. So uh, it, it turned out really good. You know, it did, again, it was, you know, sporadic, but... It all came to a head, and then and here we are now talking about it. Well, it's a nice release, so let's start going through a couple of the tunes. And the first one I want to ask you about, um, I was listening to uh, Let It Rain, and when I listened to it, I kind of almost felt like I could picture you sitting in a living room somewhere on a rainy day writing it, but maybe it didn't go down that way. Was this a moment in time you captured, or, or is it something else? Yeah, you know, it's a feeling that uh, I often say sometimes when I'm, I'm very attracted to good weather and the sun and when I look at my window it's beautiful out I'm like right, come on kids you know we gotta go outside gotta you know absorb the sun and you know it's a beautiful day we gotta enjoy it and you know but like anyone else I have those days where I just I don't want to deal with a goddamn thing and I'm just not in the mood and I, you know it's when the weather doesn't match your mood I wake up I'm like fuck it's beautiful out and I, got, I have no time for it today you know i really wish it was just a shitty rainy day and you know, let me let me skip today and you know i'll be fine tomorrow you know it's just about those days when you're just not feeling it so uh and, you know the next day you get you go right back to your normal self like what was i doing yesterday I was miserable yesterday I'm fine today <laughs> Maybe it's just my manic self. I don't know. But. That's interesting because it wasn't. You know, I really did have this vision of you just enjoy, wistfully enjoying a, a day with the, you know a cup of tea by a rainy window, and, and it's not really kind of not what it's about. So I'm really glad you shared that with us. So. <laughs> Hey, another interesting tune that I, I thought was kind of cool was this song, uh, You Would Know. And, and when I listened to it, the thing I like about it, I couldn't pigeonhole that tune into a genre. Like, I don't, I'm not a musician myself, but it sounds like it's kind of musically complicated or something. Oh, I'm glad it has that illusion. It's really not. But um, <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad I dressed it up like that. <laughs> Make people think I'm really complicated. But uh, no, it's, uh, it's constructed. Um, a little bit differently than some of the other songs in the record. Um, there's there's a, a little more space and dynamic, um, and I, I really wanted a, a kind of a kitchen sink type bridge with just big. I just you know, jellyfish is one of my biggest uh, influences. Oh, wow! And, you know, every time they go to a bridge, it just lifts the song. It takes it to a new area all, all together. And it just, you know, when you're in a bridge and it, it just creates this lift. And I wanted something 
like that. I wanted to, I wanted like the light to just shine in the middle of the song. So that that uh, yeah, I mean, I guess the bridge is pretty, you know, complex in the sense that there's strings, there's all sorts of stuff going on. And, but um, I wanted to give that, you know, uh, that lift to the song. The song is kind of moody and um, dramatic, and I really wanted that release. So um, yeah, I guess you could say it's uh, is a bit more involved than the rest of them. Man, I, I love jellyfish. I haven't listened to them in so long. I want to go back and like listen to it through that lens now. That's kind of oh, really man. cool. You're welcome. Go back. <laughs> Never leave it again. So uh, hey, one more tune I want to ask you about, and then I got a couple other things I'd like to talk to you about. Um, the song "The Good Life." Now, um, when I listen to this one, is this an autobiographical sort of song? I mean, it sounds kind of obvious, like maybe it would be, but maybe not. Yeah, you know, it's um, you know, it's obviously about kind of getting your life on track and you know um, cleaning up some bad habits and you know uh, changing your ways and so to speak and just kind of really making it simple and and easy on yourself by you know uncluttering and uh, getting away from any kind of bad habits you might have and well you know and i have a lot of friends and you know we all have our 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 issues and whatnot but you know it's inspired by you know some people that were around me that just kind of you know needed to do that and did do that and um you know it's it's just something it's a good reminder it's kind of a talk with myself but it's really inspired by you know uh, some people around me that have you know had to make life choices to help themselves. So um, and I just think it's a really good kind of uh, anthem for that. So I thought I read something kind of unique about your album cover. You want to tell us a little about your album artwork and the artist and whatnot? Uh, yes, my my now nine year old daughter, but she was eight when she painted that oh, wow. uh, my cover. She just, uh, you know, she's loves drawing and painting, and now she's on to making things out of clay. And, um, so she was obsessed with drawing eyes and painting eyes and sketching and everything. Um, she had all these just laying around. And I looked at this one. I'm like, I'm taking this. This is my album cover. <laughs> and I didn't even tell her. She, she still doesn't know. <laughs> I'm waiting to get the physical copy to hand to her so she sees it on a CD. And this way, maybe, because, you know, I, I said this before in interviews that, you know, she's an artist in the truest sense where she probably thinks it stinks and she's going to be pissed off at me that I used it and published it. <laughs> so I'm thinking maybe if I just give her a CD and like a hundred bucks for, for her work, you know, that uh, it'll soften the blow. <laughs> nice. But yeah, no, I, and turns out everybody is commenting on, you know, the cover, not even knowing that it was an eight-year-old who painted it. <laughs> That's fascinating. Yeah, I would have never... I, I read that it was your daughter, but I would have never guessed that that was the age she was when she created that. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. So, um, hey, so I want to... You know, I'm not going to have you on now ask you a trickster question, right? You knew that wasn't going <laughs> to... You never dodged that, right? Um, and I, I'm kind of curious. You know, you've made a video or two here, but I love when I talk to bands that were in that genre just about what that music video making experience was like during the MTV era. Can you just kind of explain to folks what it was like making some of those 80s era videos uh kind of grueling really taxing in the sense that in not the typical sense a lot of hurry up and wait a lot of you know let's do it again let's you know it's especially if you're doing a performance video you know you know you're working there (laughs) but um uh, some of them are really cool. I mean, the Give It To Me Good video is really fun. That that was just captured us in our elements. So that was like just following us around the day in the life of, basically. Um, but, you know, like One in a Million was a performance video, and that was, that was a two-day shoot and <clears throat> pretty involved. Um, Surrender. Surrender was kind of brutal. It was, you know, it's kind of storyline and... I don't know, our least favorite video and our most expensive. Um, that was a lot of hurry up and wait, sitting around and whatnot. Uh, but, you know, they're big budget, big productions. It's, you know... I mean, you were making a movie back then, you know what we I mean? It wasn't like now. We had a crew, we had a crew, we, you know, catering, and the whole, you know, it was making a small film. I mean, it really was, you know, we're Henson Studios in L.A., 
on the Cha- Charlie Chaplin stage for the Road of a Thousand Dreams video. Um, you know, we did all sorts of things. We were making movies. And, you know, now you can make a vid- video on your phone. <laughs> yeah, that's why I asked the question. Like, I don't know that, you know, a teenager today, if you were to watch those old MTV videos, can appreciate the, the, the Hollywood nature of what they were. But you're right. Yeah, you can do it on an iPhone now. And <laughs> it's kind of like making records. I mean, we used to, go to have to go to L.A. and block out a studio for three months to, you know, make a record and everything. You know, now you can do it in the bathroom. <laughs> Hey, when I listen to the new record, I wasn't sure I was going to ask you this, but I'm just curious. Like, if you could throw one of these tunes back in time to a Trickster album, is there one on the record that we could look at and say, I kind of wrote that back, maybe maybe none of them are like that, or maybe they're all like that, I don't know. Um, you know, it's funny, I think I wrote maybe most of the music to The Good Life um, with Trickster in mind a couple of years, I think before we did the Human Error record. I was going to use it for um, a song. I think we were like almost done with the writing, and we needed like one more song. So I had that, and then I, I came up with the song "Human Era" instead. So it's, this riff was always, and this progression was always floating around. So I decided to finish it for for my record. So, um, you know, today, modern day era, you know, all over the world, uh, where, where, what country would Trickster draw the biggest audience in now, do you think? Like, is there one hotbed or is it just kind of spread around? Um, I think we would probably do the best in Japan because oh, wow. we did great there the only one time we were there in 1994, I think. And um, we haven't been back. So I think if we went there and Europe... We're worth nothing in Europe, basically. Really? To my knowledge, because we've never been there. <laughs> but I mean, we, wow. we did play, we did play Italy and the UK, um, but that wasn't until like 2015 or 16 or something like that. So oh, okay, it really doesn't count. And but back in the day, we never went over there. So maybe South America, we did South America, maybe. Wow, so Japan, that's pretty cool. But I, I know, they, and it's and it's so weird how global that that music has spanned itself over time. So it wasn't the answer I was expecting. But it's kind of cool. Hey, um, can we talk about live music? Is there any? I mean, we know coronavirus. What are we gonna do? But is there anything planned right now for any sort of touring or any live performances? Um, yeah, I've actually been on the road quite a bit since August. I've been playing with Fozzy. Oh, with nice. Jericho. Yeah. Um, so I did a little touring with them in August. Then I played with Eric Martin of Mr. Big, yep. and me and him do like these acoustic shows. We've done like four of them already in the last month. We have another two in um, Bolingbrook, Illinois, and Pekin, Illinois, on the 15th and 16th of this month, and then we have a show in <clears throat> Kansas City, Missouri on November 7th and then shows for the rest of the year probably have like eight more shows so I mean you know we're doing them you know the good thing with the acoustic thing is it's it's uh, almost catered to a half capacity yeah. indoor room or you know an out, outdoor like kind of sitting environment you know it's it's, it's perfect tailor made for that anyway so it works well within the guidelines and to do them safely. So if people want to keep an eye on that, and uh, first of all, we want to tell people to go out and pick up Accent the Change. It's a cool release from PJ. And uh, where do you want to direct people to find those tour dates, pick up the record? Like, where's the best outlet for all your stuff? Um, I have a website, pjfarley.net. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, just at pjfarley. Um, that's the most direct, I think. You know, Facebook, I have my personal facebook which is are you know been at limit for years now so but i do have a pj farley music facebook page you can go and follow and that's you know just as good you know there's direct message and all the info from my uh <clears throat> from my other pages so um i would say instagram or pj farley uh music on facebook hey well there it is folks uh, accent the change pick it up right now and go check out the upcoming acoustic tour dates from pj hey man thank you so much for being on the show we really appreciate you taking the time today thank you and thanks for listening <laughs>